to the notes for 5-4. You're going to want to use the exploration that you already did and put that in your notes. That should be in front of these notes. Um, so because I did not include everything. For example, the definitions are not in there and some of the other properties of squares and rectangles. So as we go through these, what I'd like you to do is try and fill them in yourself and then I will come back. So here are some different other theorems that follow from the definitions that you had from the exploration. So I'd like you to try and fill these in. So push pause, fill these in, and then come back. Okay. Alright, what you should see is this was from the last part of the exploration. Um, the midpoint of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equidistant from the three vertices. If you need kind of a picture of that idea, is again it has to be a right triangle and it has to be the midpoint on the hypotenuse. So if it's the midpoint of the hypotenuse I know these are equal. The distance from this point to this vertex is the same as this point as the midpoint to this vertex and that also makes the distance from the midpoint to this vertex equal. So all of these are equal. And look so you have some isosceles triangles here Please be aware, we do not know this angle is bisected. We only know that these congruences exist. If an angle of a parallelogram is a right angle, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. Because if one angle is a right angle, if you follow the logic, you should be able to prove all of them are right angles. If two consecutive sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Poorly drawn here, but what that's saying is, hey, I'm going to tell you these two are equal. Oh, well, if you told me these two are equal, well, I know opposite sides are equal. So then they must all be equal. So it's just kind of following from the definition of a rhombus. In the next one, it's always, sometimes, never. So once again, I would like you to please work through these yourself and then come back and check your answers. So please push pause now. All right, coming back. A square is always a rhombus. A square is always going to have uh, four congruent sides. The diagonals of a parallelogram sometimes bisect the angles. That's only going to be true if the parallelogram has four congruent sides. A quadrilateral with one pair of sides congruent and one pair parallel is sometimes a parallelogram. Notice that I didn't define here that it was the same side, set, pair of sides, so that's why this is a sometimes, not an always. The diagonals of a rhombus are sometimes congruent. They're not always going to be congruent. Um, when the rhombus has four right angles, they will be. Um, that's tying it into a square. A rectangle sometimes has perpendicular angles. If the rectangle has four congruent sides, which is making it also a square, then it will have perpendicular diagonals. A rectangle sometimes has consecutive sides congruent. Same idea as the number five. The diagonals of a rhombus will always bisect each other. A rhombus is a parallelogram, and a parallelogram, the diagonals always bisect each other. The diagonals of a parallelogram are sometimes perpendicular bisectors of each other. They will always bisect, but they will only sometimes be perpendicular to each other. In the next example, it's important I told you that ABCD is a rhombus. Okay, so remember if you need to go back and look at your paper to remind you the special qualities this has and mark your picture accordingly. Um, and then you are to find these angles. So again, I'm going to ask you to push pause work this yourself and then come back to check your answer. Okay, in blue here I listed everything I could think of for a rhombus. There may be some more that I missed as well. Um, you'll see that I immediately marked the diagonals with right angles, that I marked different congruences that I knew. I also probably could have used that um, the, angle, the angles are bisected, so I could have done this as well all the way around. Okay, so ACD is 62. I know that because these two angles are equal to each other because the diagonal bisects the angles. Angle DEC is 90 degrees because the diagonals are perpendicular. Angle EDC, well if you look at this as a right triangle, I know this is 90, I know this is 62, so when I subtract those from 180 I get that EDC right here is 28. And for angle ABC, well, if this is 28, so is that by alternate interiors. These are congruent, so that's another 28. 28 times 2 makes angle ABC 56 degrees. You could have done that in a different way too, but that was one way to do it. Okay, in the next 
two examples. Okay, here's one. Again, if you have the printout, here's the other one. You can push pause if you need to see these. Again, I would like you to try them yourself. And when you're done, I would like you to check your answers. So push pause now. Okay. To go through these, this is the right angle. Since I marked AM and MB congruent, we know M is a midpoint. Since M is a midpoint on the hypotenuse, it is equidistant from the three vertices. And you'll see I added this marking in here. This is one of those theorems you guys are going to forget. Um, you're going to try and prove two little triangles congruent, and you can't. So please be careful, kind of highlight that uh, theorem because you do tend to forget that. So you can see the congruences I marked. So I think it's pretty clear MB is 7 because th they were marked congruent. AB is 14 because I need two 7s to make that. And then CM is also going to be 7 because it is equidistant. M is equidistant from each vertex. The same logic follows here. AB is X, so the whole thing is X. So AM is half of X, and so will all of these will be half of X. Down here, I told you it was a rectangle. So a couple of important things here. We know all the angles are 90 degrees, and we know that the diagonals are equal, the entire. So PN and MO are equal. So angle PON is 90 degrees. Um, definition of a rectangle, we would know that. Angle PMO is going to be 61 degrees. I know that because this is 29. I, in black, that was told to me. So 20, 90 minus 29 gives me 61. I know PL is 12 because a rectangle is a type of parallelogram and diagonals bisect each other. So PL should be 12. And I know MO is 24 because in a rectangle, um, the diagonals are equal. So if PN is 24, then MO is also 24. Okay. One last piece you may be interested in, the cheat sheet. This is your Chapter 5 cheat sheet available in Canvas. I want to show you this graphic here that's in your cheat sheet that may be very helpful. It shows you that this is a quadrilateral, and then there are two special types of quadrilateral. We're going to be going on to this little leg tomorrow. But over here we have, these are all the things that are true for a parallelogram. A rectangle and a rhombus are a type of parallelogram. So they have these special properties, but also all the ones above them. And then you have the square, and the square has these properties and the rectangle and the rhombus and the parallelogram. So this may be a very helpful graphic for some of you. And again, you can access it in the Chapter 5 uh, cheat sheet, which is listed in Canvas. Okay, that is the end of the 5-4 notes, and we'll talk about that more later.